Hey folks, today we are talking about how you can play underneath someone who's praying, reading scripture, or sharing a message from the platform. And we're going to include opportunities for you to practice that yourself. So you can watch this video, pull up your piano and pad, and do it in real time. You cannot rehearse these moments with your pastor, but you can rehearse it with us. And to help us out making this practical, we've invited Stephen from the Worship Coalition to stand in as our pastor, layperson, person who has the microphone and is gonna go who knows where. Stephen, we just finally got to meet in person at the Worship Innovators Conference, and you shared some really inspiring stories of how God has moved in the Worship Coalition, mostly over pizza. I thought, well, if only I had a piano and pad, then I could underscore this beautiful moment. So can you tell folks watching a little bit about what you do, and then we're gonna give people a chance to learn how to underscore. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for having me. So our mission statement for the Worship Coalition is to raise up an army of worshipers to shake and change nations and governments. And one of the ways that we do that is to help creatives find their voice. Yeah. And that's really important because creatives, they, they have such energy and passion, but they need that to be focused. And so what we do is we come in, we help foster that community of creatives, and we help all the creatives in a city or a region come together and point towards one vision. Mm, that's awesome. I should have been playing already, right? <laughs> okay, well, Stephen, thank you for being our guinea pig. And for you watching, this is gonna be a really practical opportunity for you to follow along. So we're gonna break this down into three parts that we just figured out a moment ago. Stephen's gonna share like an encouraging message just like a pastor or someone in your church would share from the stage. Then Stephen's gonna read a scripture from the Bible. Maybe it's your weekly scripture reading. And then lastly, Stephen's gonna share a prayer of encouragement, maybe a sending out at the end of a worship service at your church. And I don't know what Stephen is exactly going to do, just like you often don't know exactly where things are gonna go when someone's praying or teaching or speaking on stage. But we can support and enhance, and that's the goal behind this video. In the book of Revelation, we find that Jesus ultimately is coming back for a blameless and spotless bride. It says in Revelation that the bride has made herself ready and has been granted the right to wear white linens, which are the righteous deeds of the saints. As creatives, our whole intention is to help the bride get ready for Jesus to want to return for her bride. See, one of the things that we often pray is a weak prayer, the weak prayer of Jesus come back quickly. And with the state of this world that we're in, obviously there, there are wildfires, there are floods, there are all kinds of crazy things happening in this world. And what ends up happening is we pray this prayer of going, God, just take us out of this place. Just save us so that we can see you and we can praise you forever and ever. But in Revelation, we see that Jesus wants to come back for a unified bride. And so what we need to wrap our minds around is the better prayer of Jesus. How can we help your bride become ready for your return. And so as worship leaders, as creatives, we need to write the songs and pick the songs that help the bride of Christ become repentant, become holy in God's eyes, and become unified. Just as Jesus prayed right before he left this earth, he said, let them be one as we are one. He was talking to the Father. And so we need to be one unified voice singing holy 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 is the word is the lord god almighty that's what we get to do as worship pastors that's what we get to do as worship songwriters is we get to start that discussion and lead the bride towards one voice in unity singing holy around the throne for eternity Psalm 23, written by David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me by still waters. He restores my soul. 
He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God, help us to lie down. And in the times that we get so busy and distracted, like Psalm 23, we would ask that you make us lie down in green pastures. Your rod and your staff, they comfort us through your correction and through your gentle guiding hand. God, we love you and we want to serve you for the rest of our days and not get burnt out by the busyness of our daily lives. And so God, we choose right now to rest in your arms because we also know that scripture says, be still and know that I am God. And that's what we're doing today. We love you and we praise you. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Worship leader, worship keys player, this prayer is specifically for you. And just like Jesus washed the disciples' feet, you, as you play these keys, you are underscoring and washing the feet of the bride of Christ. And so lead by example and receive this prayer. Lord, I thank you for this worship leader, for this keys player the person that goes unnoticed in supporting you, the person that is to create the atmosphere and with truth and spirit comes alive. God, I pray for this person watching this video right now. May they be encouraged and empowered and not feel left out, but know that they're creating the very environment in which people get to encounter you, the living God. Let these notes be to your glory, let everything that we play support the gospel, support the message of you, and give life to our community and to other creatives around us. May our playing be in unity and with one unified yes with the other players on the stage, with the pastors, and with our city. Let our music be healing sound that washes over our cities and also let it heal us and restore our souls, that as we pour out, you backfill in and give us life and new breath and vision to see you move in our communities. We love you, we praise you, and it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Beautiful. Thank you, man. I've been a keys player my whole life. Well, we should have just put you on here. You underscore yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't have prayed nearly as good. I promise you that. But I, I just, like, I know what it's like to sit at a keyboard and to be at the side of the light, you know? <laughs> I know what it's like to sit in the shadows and have to get a phone out and shine my light on what I'm doing <laughs> and to, to underscore something greater and one of the things that we talk about when we train worship teams, our job as a team is not to push the congregation up to uh, a, a peak point or yeah. a fever pitch, yeah. but that our job as a band is to support what the congregation already wants to say yes to how God's moving. Yeah. yeah. And as a keyboard player, we can get lost in that. But I also know that my greatest form of worship comes at a keyboard mm. as well, because I feel most connected with the creator. Um, and so as I'm creating, I'm connecting with the creator and, and co-creating with him uh, this environment in which people can receive him. On the times that I feel like I'm just being utilized to keep everybody together or to fill in the sound, at the end of the day, I know that that's my greatest connection with God. But I also have to do that in private. I have to come in early. I have to stay late sometimes just to get that moment where yeah. I can play and just be alone with God so that when I do start pouring out, I'm not pouring out from a place of already being empty. I have to be filled. And actually a pastor told me one time, you cannot keep pouring out 
you have to be filled to overflowing. It's the overflow that hits everyone else. Mm -hmm. And because if you pour out, even if you're full, you're giving somebody something that was meant for you. And the results are on your shoulders. Wow. From your strength. From your own strength, because yeah. that's coming from you. But if you allow God to use you in such a way that he fills you up and you receive that to overflowing and the overflow hits everyone else, mm -hmm. then it's his responsibility for the results. It's never going to be pointed back to David. Right. Right? It's right. always going to be pointed back to him. And he gets all the glory for it. Hmm. Right? Wow. And we never have to give out anything that we're desperately needing in that moment at the same right. time. So for you guys, that's my prayer over you guys, mm -hmm. is that as much as you love to pour out, the better way is to wait and be still, know that he's God, be filled to overflowing, mm -hmm. and watch how miraculous the overflow washes over them anyway. So guys, we're here to shoot a video and just met Stephen in person <laughs> a few days ago and just been so encouraged by hearing about your ministry, seeing your heart. But I just, I, I feel that overflow right now in this space as we're shooting this video. So Stephen, I thank you for encouraging me, the guys behind the camera. And I, I really just feel in my spirit, if you're watching this video, there's overflow for you right now, Yeah. right? And so what we've said, what we've prayed, the way that we've read, that Stephen read this scripture, it's not just practical. It's preparatory, but that's spiritual work where you can find overflow for you in your relationship to your artistry, your connectedness to your instrument, the ways you're able to respond to and support what God is doing in the hearts of your congregants. So as we get into this last bit of the video that's going to be really practical, see where you can find the overflow. This space that we're trying to create, Stephen's willingness to drive to us with one day's notice and show up in front of the camera and just minister to me, to us here at Sunday Sounds, there's overflow here. So we're gonna play back these three distinct moments of sharing a story, sharing a scripture, and then praying a prayer of encouragement, what I just played under and you got to hear me play under. Now we're gonna remove my keyboard audio you're going to be able to hear Stephen's voice and you can practice finding the overflow and what God has gifted you with in your abilities and meeting to support what God is doing. So listen in your own heart as you're hearing what Stephen's saying, praying, and reading and respond in the overflow as you grow in your craft and your ability to play underneath. So get your keyboard out. It's time to practice from the overflow. And then after you watch this video, we're gonna put a link in the description where you can learn more about what Stephen is doing for songwriters to empower local churches through the Worship Coalition. All right, it's time to practice. In the book of Revelation, we find that Jesus ultimately is coming back for a blameless and spotless bride. It says in Revelation that the bride has made herself ready and has been granted the right to wear white linens, which are the righteous deeds of the saints. As creatives, our whole intention is to help the bride get ready for Jesus to want to return for her bride. See, one of the things that we often pray is a weak prayer, the weak prayer of Jesus come back quickly. And with the state of this world that we're in, Obviously, there, there are wildfires, there are floods, there are all kinds of crazy things happening in this world. And what ends up happening is we pray this prayer of going, God, just take us out of this place. Just save us so that we can see you and we can praise you forever and ever. But in Revelation, we see that Jesus wants to come back for a unified bride. And so... What we need to wrap our minds around is the better prayer of Jesus. How can we help your bride become ready for your return? And so as worship leaders, as creatives, we need to write the songs and pick the songs that help the bride of Christ become repentant, become holy in God's eyes and become unified just as Jesus prayed right before he left this earth, he said, let them be one as we are one. He was talking to the Father. And so we need to be one 
unified voice singing, holy, holy, holy is the word, is the Lord God almighty. That's what we get to do as worship pastors. That's what we get to do as worship songwriters is we get to start that discussion and lead the bride towards one voice in unity, singing holy around the throne for eternity. Psalm 23, written by David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me by still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God, help us to lie down. And in the times that we get so busy and distracted, like Psalm 23, we would ask that you make us lie down in green pastures. Your rod and your staff, they comfort us through your correction and through your gentle guiding hand. God, we love you and we want to serve you for the rest of our days and not get burnt out by the busyness of our daily lives. And so God, we choose right now to rest in your arms because we also know that scripture says, be still and know that I am God. And that's what we're doing today. We love you and we praise you. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Worship leader, worship keys player, this prayer is specifically for you. And just like Jesus washed the disciples' feet, you, as you play these keys, you are underscoring and washing the feet of the bride of Christ. And so lead by example and receive this prayer. Lord, I thank you for this worship leader, for this keys player, the person that goes unnoticed in supporting you, the person that is to create the atmosphere in which truth and spirit comes alive. God, I pray for this person watching this video right now. May they be encouraged and empowered and not feel left out, but know that they're creating the very environment in which people get to encounter you, the living God. Let these notes be to your glory. Let everything that we play support the gospel, support the message of you, and give life to our community and to other creatives around us. May our playing be in unity and with one unified yes with the other players on the stage, with the pastors, and with our city. Let our music be healing sound that washes over our cities. And also let it heal us and restore our souls that as we pour out, you backfill in and give us life and new breath and vision to see you move in our communities. We love you, we praise you, and it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Okay, so Stephen, before we wrap up the video, I know people can go to, it's theworshipcoalition.org, yep. and they can inquire about doing a songwriting intensive yeah. in their own city. But you also mentioned that you guys just released a new 30-day, it's a devotional for creatives, right? Yeah. So could you tell people a little bit about that as well? Yeah, so this just came out. Um, it's called A Living Hallelujah Inhale. And the whole point of this is to connect scripture with devotion to prayer and then release that through our creativity, mm -hmm. right? Um, because we need practical ways to be able to implement 
our spiritual life into our creativity. So yeah. this is first and foremost for Christian songwriters. Yep. But we've been seeing worship leaders already leading their teams in these discussions because they're writing prompts at the end of the day, okay. each day that they are using those questions to ask to their team. Cool. So if anybody wants to have some great discussion questions, yeah. you can find that in here too. Nice, okay, so we'll put a link in the description to the website great. and also directly to the book if you guys would like to check it out. Thanks, Stephen. It's awesome to have this conversation with you. Thanks, Stephen. See you in the next video, guys.